fertilizers are much more than just bags of stinky sand. You see, when plants grow, they absorb the nutrients and it's necessary to replace them. And this is where fertilizers step in. There are three groups of nutrients, essential, primary, and secondary. The essential nutrients are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And they are the building blocks of all organic compounds. The three primary nutrients we will be focusing on today are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So nitrogen is the leaf maker and phosphorus is the root maker, and potassium is the flower fruit maker. So that's leaves, roots, flowers, fruits. N, P, K. A question that you could do more research on is, what happens to plants when there's either a surplus or deficiency in these nutrients? So where do we get these nutrients from? Let's take a look at the processes in the fertilizer production. Nitrogen. So if you take a deep breath in, 78% of that breath was nitrogen. It's all around us in the air that we breathe, and it's collected through a process of fractional distillation of air. The second is hydrogen. Although it isn't a primary nutrient, it is still very important, and it's extracted from fossil fuels. The third is ammonia. So ammonia is formed through reacting hydrogen and nitrogen in the harbor process. And it's very important to remember and revise the harbor process in the context of your equilibrium reactions. So let's get to the fun stuff. We have two processes, the Oswald process, which forms nitric acid and the contact process, which forms sulfuric acid. Now these two processes are very important. You need to be familiar with them and be able to balance the reactions. To help you remember the steps, we have a rhyme, breathe, breathe, drink. So for the Oswald process, you begin with ammonia reacting with oxygen to form nitrogen monoxide. So that first oxygen is the first breath. So in the second step, we have nitrogen monoxide reacting with oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide. So that second oxygen is the second breath. The third step, we have nitrogen dioxide reacting with water to form nitric acid. So that water is the drink. So breathe, breathe, drink. Contact process. So sulfur reacts with oxygen to form sulfur dioxide. That oxygen is the first breath. And in the second step, sulfur dioxide reacts with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide. And that oxygen is the second breath. Up till this point, the process has been pretty similar to the Oswald process. If sulfur trioxide reacted with water, it would form sulfuric acid. But it would be a fine mist, which would be hard to collect. So we'd rather react sulfur trioxide with sulfuric acid to form oleum. Now it does sound a bit strange to use sulfuric acid to form more sulfuric acid, but this is a Hollywood movie, so expect a happy ending. So the final step in the contact process is oleum reacting with water. And this forms a double batch of sulfuric acid. Now we gave a little and we got a lot. So if this doesn't make you jump out of your chair, I don't really know what will. Now with all these ingredients, we can make different types of fertilizers. So I'm going to make ammonium nitrate. I begin with ammonia and a little bit of nitric acid. Ammonium nitrate. And if I wanted to make potassium sulfate, I'd begin with potassium chloride and add a bit of sulfuric acid. Potassium sulfate. So those are two important fertilizers that you need to remember. And now with different fertilizers comes different proportions of nutrients. And this is where the NPK ratio comes into play. So the NPK ratio is a ratio by mass of each of the three primary nutrients. Next to the ratio is a number in brackets. Now this number represents the entire mass as a percentage. For example, if the number was 38, that means 38% of the entire bag of fertilizer is N, P, and K. The remaining 62% would be a filler. Now, remember to do your practice calculations because these are common exam questions. There are two types of fertilizers, organic and inorganic. Types of organic are compost, manure, and bone meal. Now, these are made from natural products, so they're super environmentally friendly. But we have a couple of problems with organic fertilizers. Firstly, we can't control exactly what nutrients are in them. And secondly, they have low levels of nutrients and they're slow absorbing. And we need heaps and heaps of them to make any valuable impact. 
This is going to open the door for inorganic fertilizers. Earlier on, we looked at a whole bunch of industrial processes. Now these are the processes that we use to manufacture inorganic fertilizers. Now inorganic fertilizers have some great advantages. Firstly, we have better control over the types of nutrients in the fertilizer and a higher level of nutrients. They are also more easily absorbed. This can lead to better results and is generally more cost effective. Earlier on, we looked at a whole bunch of industrial processes. Now these are the processes we use to manufacture inorganic fertilizers. Now inorganic fertilizers have some great advantages. We have better control over the types of nutrients in each type of fertilizer and higher levels of nutrients. They are also more easily absorbed. This leads to better results and is more cost effective. However, there can be some disadvantages if not managed properly. For example, over fertilizing, this can lead to soil poisoning, which is an accumulation of unabsorbed nutrients that can seep into underground water sources. This contaminates water supplies, which can be a health hazard and even lead to things such as blue baby syndrome. Additionally, excess nutrients can be washed into nearby rivers or dams and can cause a rapid growth of algae, which covers the surfaces of the water, blocks out the sunlight, decreases oxygen content in the water, and causes fish to die. Basically, it's a big stinking mess called eutrophication. But problems aside, these can all be avoided with good management. In summary, fertilizers are a great help to farmers in producing healthy crops and a high crop yield. Now you know a lot more about those smelly sandbags. But what do you have to do to get those top marks in this section? Know your nutrients and what part they play. Familiarize yourself with the industrial processes. Work on your N, P and K calculations. Revise all information on the environmental impact. And finally, get some past papers. Practice, practice, practice!